Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Specialist Performance Testing Certification. We are in chapter three talking about performance testing in the software lifecycle and continuing ahead with the next topic that is 3.3, performance risk across the software development lifecycle. Of course, we do remember some of the things from our previous certification, that's CTFL, Certified Foundation Tester. And we spoke about these things much earlier, that what exactly uh, risk is all about, what's the basic fundamentals of the risk management within a particular life cycle, how exactly it can be assessed with their likelihood and impact in order to determine that how exactly a risk should be taken into account in order to make sure that they are well mitigated within the process and we do not have any kind of you know risk appearing later at point of time and here as well we will have the same generic process but just limited to performance parameters and performance risk putting it all together the risk process does invite you to know that this is a four stage process and how exactly do you really take care of risk analysis within the software development lifecycle so let's get started. The process of analyzing risk is to, to the quality of the software product in general. You can also find discussions of specific risk and considerations associated with particular quality characteristics or from a business or technical perspective. The focus here is on performance related risk to product quality, including ways that can be processed, the participants and the consideration change. Now, of course, the performance related risk of to the quality of the product, this is very straightforward. At a foundation level, we understood about that the risks are of two different types, that is project risk and product risk, where product risk are more of the quality characteristics driven and uh, relates to the basic architecture which has been created following that you talk about security parameters usability parameters performance parameters so all the non-functional things comes into picture here when we talk about uh, considering the product risk and one of them is of course the performance so performance plays really vital role when it comes to the risk of the product and do consider them at the very beginning stage of the you know, planning and analysis of that. And the stages do remain the same that you start with risk identification, risk assessment, followed by risk mitigation, and throughout the process, you do risk management. So here also we have the same thing from the performance risk point of view. Number one, identify risks to, uh, to product quality, uh, focusing on characteristics such as time behavior, resource utilization, and capacity. Assess the identified risk, which is done in terms of measuring the uh, impact and the likelihood to determine the level of risk, which will definitely tell you that how much effort would be required to mitigate it and what kind of uh, mitigation steps would be necessary enough to uh, do that job. Third, take appropriate risk mitigation actions for each risk item based on the nature of the risk item and the level of risk involved. Number four, manage risk on on an ongoing basis to ensure that the risk are adequately mitigated prior to release. So uh, generally the third, fourth, fourth step here, risk management is all about that you identified something, did you really mitigate that? Or maybe if you would have mitigated earlier, probably at a later stage that pops up again. So you don't want such surprises happening in the real time when the users are working on it and uh, you wanna make sure that once you try to bury them within the application, they do not emerge again and again. And similarly, due to that closure of such mitigated risk, is there any other thing which is rising up is where you take care of the risk management part of it. Also, as with the quality risk analysis in general, the participants in this process should include both business and technical stakeholders. Business will contribute from the quality point of view and the technical will definitely talk how to achieve it. So for performance related risk analysis, the business stakeholder must include those with a particular awareness of how performance problems in the production will actually affect customer and users, the business and other downstream stakeholders. And further to add, of course, from the technical stakeholder point of view, it must include those with a deep understanding of the performance implications of the relevant requirement, architectural design, and implementation decisions. So business from the point of expectations, technical from the point of deploying or implementing them. 
The specific risk process or risk analysis process chosen should have the appropriate level of formality. As we are talking about performance could be the most important thing for some of our businesses. And we just want to make sure that it's the most critical thing you are dealing with and should be done much and much formal way. Uh, for performance related risk, it is also important that risk analysis process be started as early as possible and is repeated regularly because performance risks uh, are quite difficult to be mitigated at certain point of time. So you, uh, it's, it's always good the more early you start with it and uh, you do make sure that uh, you consistently keep a track on it because these can always emerge at any point of time. In addition, the risk mitigation and management must pan uh, and influence the entire software <clears throat> development process, not just dynamic testing. So you do understand from our previous sessions that uh, performance testing is something which really doesn't wait for the system to be completely ready and start with executions of the performance scenario, but rather you can just get started right at the designing level or at least right at the coding level to execute some of the basic tests to realize uh, if those things are behaving appropriately at the component level and then integration level, and then you can really improvise a lot of things much earlier. You don't forget that early testing is always cheaper. Uh, good performance engineering can also help project teams avoid the late discovery of critical performance defects during the high level testing, uh, high test levels, such as system integration testing or user acceptance testing. Performance defects found at a late stage in the project can be extremely expensive and may even lead to cancellation of the entire project. So it's always, always very, very important that you kick off with your performance related activities much earlier uh, in the beginning of the, uh, the entire development life cycle. As with any type of quality risk, performance related risk can never be avoided completely. That means you do not really have a choice of ignoring the risk some of the risk like performance related production failure will always exist therefore the risk management process must include providing a realistic and specification a specific evaluation of the residual level of risk to the business and technical stakeholders involved in the process now that is from the point of like making sure that you know, what exactly is the count of uh, the performance uh, risk, which are residual? And if they are residual, will they really create an impact uh, to an user experience? If so, then you try to mitigate it. If you are trying to push off, then just make sure that how fast you can actually mitigate and they are out of the reach of an uh, ordinary user using the product. For example, simply saying, yes, it is possible for a customer to experience long delays during the checkouts is not helpful as it gives no idea of what amount of risk mitigation has occurred or of the level of the risk that remains. Instead, providing clear insights into the percentage of customer likely to experience delay equal to or exceeding certain thresholds will help people understand the status. So being more precise and to the point is more important in terms of performance because you just can't tell them, yeah, this is what the things can be expected about roughly. No, you have to be more precise that only if you go beyond 500 users, people may experience some issues or probably at this point of time of the day, you may experience a heavy load or low response time and uh, otherwise it was just going to work good. So you give them very precise to the point, very specific information so the client is all prepared to handle such scenarios in real time. Well, that was all to talk about the performance risk across the life cycle and how exactly you handle them. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.